world. You may wonder what we're all doing here today. So I want to I want to thank you all for coming. You know, we just turned 15 years old. And over the last 15 years, I think people have talked about how we're efficient and we're new and we're, we are, you know, a great operation, we're growing. They also talk, though, about how beautiful this facility is. And part of it is this tent structure, and part of it is the public art process, the, the projects that are here that you, Mr. Ansbacher, had a great deal to do with. So a month or so ago, this gentleman came to me with a great idea, and we're going to let him tell you why we're here. So this idea, and it's worth pointing out, hi, happy, the uh, former, former staff, um, it's worth pointing out that when, when this airport was envisioned from the very beginning, Federico Pena had a close, a, a, a close voice in his ear saying, wouldn't it be incredible if this airport was a thing of beauty and that we hired an incredible architect and that we put, we used our 1% for art in the airport. We, don't let, we didn't let people push it aside and we made this like a cultural destination in its own right. And back in, in 1988 was when the, the well, first, first let me just say, that happened. So there are 26 site-specific uh, uh, pieces of art here by 39 different artists. Uh, it is the largest, uh, it's arguable, but I, I would say the largest and most comprehens comprehensive public art project of any airport in the world, any airport on Earth. Uh, and certainly the most provocative, transformational art. If you go through them from the trains uh, to the terminals, uh, the main concourses, it is breathtaking and it is commented on again and again and again. And it has a lot to do with why the approval ratings, you, know, you think it's just mayors and senators that care about approval ratings. It is airports care about it as well. And it's one of the reasons that it is so, uh, the DIA has become such a, a fixture of people's imagination. Now, as Kim said, it's now just, we're still, this is the 15th year anniversary, so it's a perfect time. And part of the art program was to have rotating exhibits, which again was all imagined and created and structured. And actually right now we're having, uh, there's an exhibit on Denver Health, which is celebrating its 150th anniversary. Uh, a certain symmetry there, 15 years for the airport, 150 for the, now we have to find out what the 1500 year anniversary is or something. Uh, anyway, Mayor Pena had, uh, largely at the instig instigation of Charles Ansbacher, a Blue Ribbon Advisory Committee for the design of the new, of the new DIA. And that group started meeting uh, back in 1988. Now keep in mind, this, that was a long process. So uh, he was the director of the new airport art program uh, and, and from its incubation until as they really went out and, and made it real. Uh, he's also, as you all know, a, a world-renowned conductor. Uh, he was the conductor in Colorado Springs for many, many years. Uh, I think it was 20 years, right, at least. Um, and was named Conductor Laureate when he left. Uh, he's held title positions with, uh, with uh, orchestras, Boston, Moscow, Sarajevo, and Bishkek. Uh, he created the Bo Boston Landmarks Orchestra in 2000 as a gift to his home community. Uh, he has, is someone who has enriched every place he's been by his own vision and his willingness to give of himself uh, back to his community. And, we were de devastated when, when Charles and Swanee left Denver, but they never have really left. They still have property in Colorado, and they have been faithful and loyal friends of this community for all these years. Uh, so this is our opportunity to just say thanks uh, to Charles, the whole Ansbacher family. I don't know where Swanee's around here somewhere. She's hiding over here. Uh, was it? Uh, she's going to say, I also want to thank Elizabeth Mason. Where did Elizabeth Mason go? She was here a second ago. She's, she's hiding. So Elizabeth Mason has done so much to pull all this together and, and, and make this happen. So do you want to say a few words before we do the actual dramatic? Um, oh, look, you got the yeah. historical. In the car, I'm coming. Oh, I love it. See, I have to tell you, first of all, this, whatever is going to happen, was not my idea. <laughs> no, truly, I, no. I, so anyway, um, so here, this is from... 1990, June 14th, from uh, Charles to the Blue Ribbon Advisory Committee. I'm just going to read a couple of things. I recognize the important practical and engineering benefits of the fabric roof. Uh, so far, the architectural concept is too regular. <laughs> uh, the, sh the shapes repeat too often without sufficient shape or focus. The architect should be encouraged to come back with a more individualistic and dramatic roof. 
They should experiment with columns at different spacing, 30, 60, and 90 foot intervals, and greater height variations and uh, variances. And they should take this tent-like symbolism of the roof and put it over the parking garages, the toll booths, and, and perhaps even various other parts of the building. But number six, my congratulations to the airport staff for its willingness to look at this relatively new system. So that was one role. And then, and then I also, we, went, we were cleaning the basement looking for this stuff. And so I found the master plan for art at the Denver International Airport, and the date is 1989. And he says, an airport is not an end in itself. Its design and operation must support Denver's broader desires and aspirations to enhance the social, commercial, physical, and cultural life of the city and the region. And then, then he put on this big show, remember, before it opened up? So Charles had like five different roles <laughs> in this. And here's the Colorado Statesman. Phil, this is the one that says, I want to make sure you saw this. Uh, and it talks about that there, the weekend is attracted in excess of 350,000 people, organizers and law enforcement officials said. I thought that was pretty interesting. And an estimated of 150,000 others, um, no, and a, a, another 175,000 viewed on a, um, the broadcast on Denver television. And so the last I'll read to you is from the actual opening ceremony. And it's a long booklet that will be there at the reception. But here's a tiny one sentence. And he said, the art of this airport focuses on several themes relative to the surroundings, including Western life, travel, light, wow. and space. And I cannot tell you how many hours our family endured dinner <laughs> conversations that w w Lillian would say, oh, I got an A in spelling. And Teddy would say, my new friend is mad at me. And Charles would, s and Henry would say, you know, here's how things are going at Colorado College. And Charles would say, look, look, these, these, um, the terminal's going to be this way. And then there's going to be these concourses. And then, you know, and he just goes on. And he would draw on napkins. He would draw on the tablecloth. And I'm so glad that we got past that period. <laughs> and here we are. So thank you all for being here. So thank you, Swanee. And thank all of you. Uh, where's Kim Dago? I want to thank Kim. You know, a lot of, a lot of times, you, a mayor can go up to their, you know, the person who actually runs the place and say, hey, we've got this great idea. You know, and, and it's very easy for that official to say, Yes, let's get a committee. We have a process. We've got to go through and do all this. Kim Day made this happen in record time. So, great idea. Great uh, ideas well, good ideas are a dime a dozen. It's getting them done is what really counts. But anyway, this is all our way of just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. So now, without further ado, we get to unveil our new description and naming of this hall of the concourse as the Charles Ansbacher Hall. Forever. <laughs> <laughs>